it's hard to decide where to begin with it with WRC3. The best way to tackle this game is to break it down into sections, starting with the development. WRC3 was completely built on the ground up by Milestone using their new in-house developed game engine called the Spike Engine. This allowed the development team to play with new lighting effects and other graphical changes, and the effort they put into the graphics really shows thanks to their new engine. WRC3 looks fantastic, and thankfully they did not ruin their fantastic new graphics with a display filter. The menus look very nice and have an interesting style. Parts of the menus were designed by artists from Italy. Even though the images are very clearly paintings, they look very nice and fit in nicely with the rest of the game. The game engine also gives the cars a breath of fresh air. This time around the models look much cleaner and shinier, and the chrome parts of the cars now have visible light reflections. The interiors were also given an overhaul, the textures now looking much cleaner than they did before, even if sadly, all the cars still have the same rev count for the speedometer. The cabin was also pulled back, giving us a much broader view of the car's interiors. What is really bizarre is how the camera is constantly stuck facing slightly to the right. It is unclear as to why the camera does this. It is off-putting and confusing. Despite spending some time in the cockpit view, I personally find it very difficult to drive with the camera facing to the right. This issue can be resolved by holding the right thumbstick to the left, but then you can't pull the handbrake, which by default is assigned to the A button. Weather effects were also added to some stages, such as Wales with its constant rainfall. Not all of the countries offer weather effects, and they cannot be controlled, but it is a welcome addition to the franchise. Many of the rallies from the previous games are completely rebuilt from the ground up, giving us brand new stages to play with. Some rallies still retain the stage layout from the previous games, but they still feel brand new. As thanks to the new graphics engine, they are almost completely unrecognisable. Germany, for example, whilst the layout remains the same, the roads are now wider, allowing you to drive much faster and wider than you were able to before. Argentina is now much darker, as more trees were added, casting large shadows along the path. The roads in Italy are now much smoother than they were in WRC2. New Zealand makes its return from WRC 2010, featuring different stages than it did before. Monte Carlo is the only new rally in WRC3, and it is very challenging. The developers went out of their way to recreate the Monte Carlo Valley and their effort really shows. Part of the valley are recognisable from Dirt 3. The challenge comes in fight with a new physics system. Again, the physics is something which is completely rebuilt. The car still feels like a car, and not rotating pivot like it did in WRC 2010. But it feels much different to how it did in WRC 2. It's hard to describe what the physics feel like. The only way I can describe it is that it is much more difficult to learn, and it also allows you to really push and throw your car around. Stage cutting has been prevented for the most part. The reset system is now much more stricter. The grass is really sticky and slows you down a lot. Some of the previous cuts are prevented by simply placing a large rock in the way in the case of Argentina. Cutting is still present, but only a very tiny bit. But there are a couple of stages where I accidentally found large cuts due to driver error. For example, on one stage, I messed up a hairpin and drove off the side of it, but the game reset me further down the stage. I'm not going to show the cuts here, because it would be unfair if people started to use them online. Sounds have also been vastly improved, the most obvious improvement being the engine noise of the cars. Some of the cars now feature new sounds, and they sound excellent. The train you race on also sounds better than it did before. Even small details such as the rustling of bushes when you drive through them sound excellent. A brand new co-driver was recorded this time round. The voice sounds more authentic in the sense that the voice sounds like you were hearing it through a radio as a real rally driver would. The new voice is also much more friendly as well. The co-drivers in the previous games were notorious for being very pushy and very whiny when you were not in first place. Now I did say co-driver and not co-drivers. The previous games featured both male and female co-drivers, but for some reason, WRC3 only features a male co-driver. Which would be fine if the game wasn't officially licensed by a championship that has female co-drivers. For example, this EVO 10 is piloted by two females, but in-game however... Right 3, long... And 60, left right chicane, into right 4. Left 4, careful, on crest, 
very long. Yes, you still hear a man's voice. You are also not given the option to choose the sex of your co-driver when setting up your own team in the Road to Glory mode. The Road to Glory mode is the brand new career mode, and this time around you don't just race on special stages. The new career mode is non-linear. It is divided into seven areas which feature two countries. It is non-linear in the sense that you don't just finish one area and move on to the next. Each event within an area has certain requirements you need to meet before you can unlock them, such as beating a certain boss or by earning a certain amount of stars. Money has been replaced by stars. You earn stars during races in career mode, and they are awarded depending on your position in an event and the points you earn in the race from pulling stunts such as drifts and jumps. Stars are not spent, you simply use them to claim rewards such as cars and liveries. Each area has its own boss. After earning a certain amount of stars, you can face that boss in a one-on-one -on -one race on a super special stage. Beating the boss grants you more stars and new events to race in each area. 90% of career modes are on special stages and rallies, but the game likes to take a break and branch off into other areas, such as Crash and Run where you earn points from smashing through gates placed on the stage, or Top Rally Contests where you race against something that is not a car, like helicopters and planes. There are lots of other modes that the game offers during your career. Whilst these are fun to play, frankly they don't distract from the actual rallying. Building up your team actually feels like it has a purpose this time. You are no longer forced to sign with an official WRC team. Now you can own and customise your own WRC cars. Nice addition is the free mode found within Motor Glory. Some classes in WRC 2 such as debut cars and WRC 2008 to 2010 will only be raced in career mode, meaning that you could not race your favourite car on your favourite special stage because you were restricted to racing in events the game gave you. It's the same case here in WRC 3 with some car classes, but the free mode lets you drive any of your unlocked cars on any special stage. Xbox Live for the most part is unchanged, in the sense that all the players pull from the start line at the same time and are displayed as ghosts. There are a few changes, which unfortunately have made the game worse. There is no longer an option for the host to select the stages. Now only the game can randomly decide the stage, or the players in the lobby can vote. But even the voting system is ruined. Voting in the previous games weren't like you would expect. Whichever stage gets the most votes is the stage that is selected. Not this time though, now the game puts all the votes for a sort of roulette system and it randomly chooses one which makes no sense, because if 15 people select Monte Carlo and one guy votes for Spain, is it really fair on the other 15 people that they should end up on Spain? Group B and other classes cannot be raced online either. This time you can only use WRC2, Class 2 and Class 3. The XP system makes its return, this time represented by this picture of Justin Bieber, whose clothes change as your rank progresses. No, seriously look, it's Justin Bieber. You still get no rewards for levelling up, but really just increasing that number next to your name is a good enough incentive to keep racing Left online. And of right course racing with your friends, right left, which is still as fun as it ever was. The Super Special Stage Mode is back, but this time it seems pointless. Super Specials can be raced in other game modes, and you don't have a Super Special Stage rank online to top up with achievements for either. Overall, it's hard really to sum up WRC3. It's such an amazing game, and Milestone have really put all their effort into making this title the best so far. Everything is improved. Well, okay, not everything. The menus are now full of... <sighs> Dubstep. Apart from that, yes, everything is much better than it ever was, especially the graphics. They do look up to date with other races now, and in general, they just look fantastic, especially the raindrops on the cars during the Wales Rally stages. The sheer difficulty and steep learning curve may be a bit too much for newcomers, 
but the assist you can set up in the options menus will help players ease in. Dirt 4 is yet to see the light of day, but it is questionable whether or not it will be on the same level as WRC 3, in terms of just how complex the physics and stages are. For Dirt 4 will certainly have some tough competition to beat. I'm going to end this review by saying that you should definitely buy WRC 3, even if you are only a small fan of racing games. Well done Milestone, you've really outdone yourselves here. Yeah.